What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Sunless Sea. My name is Splattercat, super stoked to have you here today as we hang out for a little while and we are in Varkus and I think we actually ran out of time and so we've got to go to the inn now. At evening, after the fifth bell, each Thomas is assigned a room. The light is endless and merciless. Will you sleep? All visitors to Varkus are given one night's accommodation in the city's only inn. It is a handsome stone mansion arranged around a pleasantly cool courtyard. Frescoes of city life are painted onto the walls, and given how few visitors Varkus hosts, you suspect the inn is more usually used by philandering locals. Evening falls, or does it? The town's five principal mirrors are mounted on coiled spring mechanisms and alter their angles subtly to create the impression of evening. Across the city, the firekeepers throw pinches of colored powder into the lamps, and the quantity of light yellows to a softer brightness. Now we can talk to a lamp lighter. We can go to the kitchens and look for something good there. We can go out to the courtyard. We can sleep or we can don't sleep. It won't be difficult to stay awake in this constant light. Okay. Let's go to the kitchens. That sounds good. The smells of cooking mingle with the fungus rot, but you aren't going to let that put you off your food. The inn's cook makes a thick spiced stew of fungus flowers and lotus root eaten with chunks of boiled cassava and rice imported from inland. But it is the light hungry fruit grown in the city that makes your mouth water. Tart scented oranges and bruised yellow bananas, pineapples bursting with juice, tender coconuts with a silky white flesh scooped out and sap sweet on the tongue. Do you not eat meat, you ask in wonderment, and the inn's cook calls to me here for strength. It is forbidden to eat the flesh of living creatures, he says. Luckily, the Varkese don't fancy the Z-faring life. Okay. And I suppose we'll sleep. The bed is low and wide and draped with cotton sheets stamped with vegetable dye patterns and muted greens and blues. You fall into a sleep easily despite the bright light, but your dreams are full of whispering, glittering smokes, mirror vapors that coil into reflection warping shapes. You see your limbs bend, your skin slough, and your eyes twist. You wake with your heart pounding. Your nostrils are full of the fungal rot smell of Varkus. Your body is as it always was, but somehow that is not as comforting as it should be. It's time to leave. We gain ten terror and menaces. A dream of smoke. So there it is. We leave Varkus. Outsider time at Varkus is strictly rationed. Each morning at dawn, the guard visits the inn to eject any Tamas they find. They are polite, but very definite. Return, the guard tells you, but not yet. With that, they usher you into the darkness beyond the walls. You blink, or you blink, mirror dazzles from your eyes. It's cold out here. Okay. I'm going to take a look at my journal for a couple of seconds and figure out. It's been like a week since I played the game last. And so I need to figure out what we're up to right now because I don't really know what our objectives were or what we were trying to accomplish. As far as I know, we were going towards the bottom right-hand corner of the screen in order to, or the bottom right-hand corner of the map in order to uncover that and get business done. However, I'm going to run through the journal real fast off camera, and when I come back, I'll have a better idea of what we've been working on. Okay, I've got a general idea of the things that are going on. So we'll go ahead and bounce on out of Varkus. And actually, at the moment, we're almost in the bottom right-hand corner. We're making pretty good time. The only downside here is that our hull is a tiny bit fractured, and that makes me feel a bit ill at ease like it's not horrible but I can live with it like we're below half hull and what that means is every single time we get hit now we're going to lose crew which means we could actually end up stranded just kind of floating in the middle of nowhere which is a downer I don't want to do that I'm not a big fan of the sea although I did fancy going to sea when I was a kid that was one of the things that I considered for career options I wanted to be you know those big shipping ships those big ass just freight ships that go all over the world I always thought that'd be kind of a cool job. Just be on one of those ships doing work every day and being in a different country every few weeks. Offloading stuff. Onloading things. Doing all kinds of fun adventures. I don't know. It seemed like a good idea to me. What is that over there? Is that anything of note? Please let me know. There are no islands within the z range. Well, what the hell is that then? That's a definite hand being raised towards the sky. Why was this not mentioned? This definitely seems like the kind of thing you would bring up. Little baby bat that I have sent out. Oh, we gained a secret. That's good. The bad part about that is that we don't have very... Oh, nope. Kill the lamp. Kill the lamp. I don't want to die like an ocean tramp. Alright, so... As soon as he goes away, we'll make sure that we avoid him the next time around. Supplies and fuel are looking okay. 
echoes stalk you through the colonnades. An old veracity lives here. In the far reaches of the Z, the priests are long gone, but sacrifices are still made. Perhaps you have come here to make a sacrifice. Perhaps the sacrifice is you. A woman in rags stands on the battlement, staring to the east. We can lose our mind. Offer terror no more than 20. Oh. And then you can eat your crew if you want to. We can construct the Fulgent Impeller. Which we definitely don't have the thing of. Offer your stories. What is one more departure among so many? We can compile a port report. I will do that. Everything is horrible. It's not really an appropriate title for a formal report, is it? Let's find something a little bit more clinical. <laughs> Everything is horrible. A woman in rags stands on the battlement staring to the east. I am sorry. I did not expect anyone else to be here. Sit with me. No, do not look to the east. I only dare because I know I will see nothing like the five before me. It is my first time at Z. We do not get out much, but you, you must have traveled far to end up here. Tell me your stories. You barely begin before she interrupts. How about the Gantt Pole? They say there they can see the future. If you go, could you ask what the Seventh will witness? I happily will give my life to prepare the ground, but to know would be the greatest of honors. I guess? This will expend fuel supplies to lower your terror. I'm kind of curious. You lose 25 terror? Oh my god. That's like baller. A red and roaring light at King Eater Castle, one finds unexpected words rising easily to the lips. You speak them, and so do your zailers as they build the offering pyre. The heart is the destiny's engine, the bosun mumbles. He looks embarrassed. We shall all return. You find yourself reply. You light the pyre and stand back. The flames warm you and warm your crew. The light plays on your faces and your outstretched hands. The darkness shrinks back, and crackling of the flames is the sound of home. Cool. I had no idea that that wasn't even an option here, so that'll be good. That's actually a nice way to kind of take the edge off of... Didn't I need to go up to the Chelinit for something? I feel like I needed to go up to the Chelinit for something. Basically, if I go up to the Chelinit and then I cut left, we should be solid. Because the one thing I really, really, really need to do on this trip is go to Station 3. Because we're carrying around far too much cargo. Alright, let's wait for this asshole to leave. We may have to go around the horn. I'm going to do it. Just because I'm going to give him some time to do his own thing. Our terror is low enough right now to where I'm not going to worry about using up all of my fuel. Tasex Fury. Okay. That's good. We could actually really, really use the extra fragments. So I'm glad that we got those. Fragments are one of those trade goods that it's like when you don't have them, you're like, well, shit. And as you get further and further into the game, it becomes more and more and more difficult to get more fragments. Like, you can pick them up from little random events here and there. But they're still probably one of the resources that is in shortest supply in the game. You can't buy them. Most of the time, the places you can get them from only give them in, like, increments of, like, 10 or 15. So it can take you a long, long time to stack up, like, the 200 or 300 you need on occasion to try an event two or three times and succeed. There should be... We still have not found the spider place either, interestingly enough. There is an island somewhere around here that's been taken over by spiders. It's like an I There it is. It's an island where everybody worships the spiders that live underneath the soil. It's kind of an interesting location. We'll stop off here too and we'll get ourselves one of the... We'll stop off here and we'll get ourselves the port report and we'll see what kind of like random stuff we can do. There's also a sunken ship around here somewhere that you can like go on board and like raid over and over and over again if you've got foxfire candles. I never have foxfire candles because they're expensive, but you can do it if you want. What the shit is that? The Tree of Ages. Nah, I ain't playing that noise. Not today, anyways. I do not have the time or the patience for that ass whooping. Let's maybe just cut north. I don't think he'll stay on us. My guess is that our weird trunked friend over here will fall off once we start getting nearer to a port. But yeah, this is what I was looking for over on this side. It's just that 
Oh, good. We got 50 more fragments, too, so that'll be nice. Oh, my God, there's a sneeze hiding in the back of my nose right now. It is trying so hard to mess up this recording. It really, really wants to. All right. The sound of their constant motion is like pebbles on a beach. Eww. Intricate webs stretch into the darkness where the shadows are never entirely still. Gossamer threads stolen by the breeze tickle the goosebumps on your skin. A thousand unseen eyes promise a million more. So we can explore with candles or without candles. I would not do it without candles. It's a bad plan. Even with candles, it only raises your chance by like 15%. In general, what you're doing is you can farm bolts of spider silk over here. We do have a provisioner. I'll probably buy a couple stacks of fuel real fast just to make sure that we have enough to get out of here. The glumness of the nativity is broken by the reds and golds of freshly hung banners. Spider-worshipping weavers and widows guide the traders in readying their celebration of gratitude for the generous neighbors that silently watch over them from the shadows. Now we can trade supplies for silk if you want to. So for two supplies, I think they give you one silk or something like that. You have casks of mushroom wine. Apparently that's the only way to get a port report. A little bit of a bummer. We can also do a delivery of trinkets. An almost entirely legitimate silk trader urgently requests your help with a delivery to fall in London. Trinkets? Just trinkets, confirms the man holding out the box. From inside comes a slight cracking sound, a hiss, and a scratch that hints at a nail on wood. Trinkets, he repeats, not meeting your eyes. I feel like I'm going to get in trouble for this one. The assistance of an experienced captain and crew will hardly be turned down. The traders of the nativity have little practice showing appreciation, but at least you put in an effort. In particular, they not only accidentally let slip the secret of the Accord of Grace, a hospitality granted visitors by the generous neighbors of whom they will speak no ill will. They do, however, hint that this only applies to travelers arriving through the port. Those unlucky enough to run aground on the rocks consider themselves. But nah, a sorrow spider might hear something they would, of course, never say. Okay. And so when we have something awaits us, we can actually become the emissary of spiders. But that won't be for today's trip. Instead, we'll do our best to get up to the Chelinet. And then we'll cut westwards. Hopefully, we'll get some of the heart iron ingots for turning in some of those strong boxes we have on board. I do think that that's a really, really good idea. These over here... The ship that I was looking for should be in the region somewhere. We got Savior's Rocks. That's going to give us 50 more fragments. And in fact, we're on the edge of another secret right now. So hopefully we can roll that over before too long. However, there should be like a sunken ship out here somewhere. And you can explore it with Foxfire Candles as well. I don't see it though. So I suppose we'll just have to live with the fact that we did not discover everything on this trip. As we move our way up towards the Chelinet, we will stop by the Gant Pole as well while we're up there. I think it's a really, really good idea. Oh, there it is. It's off to the left right here. So that'll be our secret. So there it is. We're 40 fragments up. The wreck of the Nocturne. The webbed hulk of this once proud vessel refuses to be dragged beneath the black waves. We can board the monoleum. Superstitions of the Z give even cynical zailers pause before ransacking half-drowned vessels. Still, nothing in the code prohibits indulging curiosity. Okay, so we're going to need some Foxfire candles to make that one work as well. Although, as I said previously, I was already well aware of the fact that we were going to need those in order to make this work. So, why concern yourself now? We'll go up to the Chelinet. Don't think I'll stop off beneath the sea for right now. Seems like a bad plan. We are going to need to reprovision and rebuy supplies, though, very, very shortly. And until we do, we might find ourselves a little bit worried about our continued sailing proficiencies. It's hard to be proficient at sailing when you have no fuel in the tank, you know. I assume we've got oars around somewhere and we can force these bastards to row, but presumably that'll make them more hungry and then we've got to feed them. And then eventually we'll have some kind of mutiny on our hands because ain't nobody want to row a boat for hella long. That shit sucks. I mean, it's not as bad as kedging, but if you don't know what kedging is, it's essentially where you take the anchor out. and So when there's no wind and you're like stuck in the doldrums, you can kedge. And then kedging is where you put the anchor in one of your lifeboats. They row the lifeboat out as far as the anchor will go. They drop it to the bottom. 
and then you reel in from the ship side, and it will drag the ship along the surface of water towards where the anchor hits the bottom of the ocean. It's called kedging. Goodbye, Stygian Ivory here, but not a whole lot else. Inside the Chelinit. Take shore leave. I don't think I'll do that. We will, however, get the port report. I would show off a hunting trophy here, because why not? So there it is. We've got ourselves another outlandish artifact. Sounds good to me. We are all out of other stuff, but that's okay. And we've got our port report, so we will step on out at the Gantt Pole. We'll drop beneath the surface. Fuel is getting quite low. But we'll either be able to resupply at the Isle of Cats or elsewhere. There's the camp pole. The haunted doctor shrinks from a sorrow spider. How did that horrible creature get on board the ship? I can smash the sorrow spider with a flung boot. Or I can call a Zaylor to deal with it. Let's smush it. A relief. The haunted doctor breathes easier. He rummages for a hidden bottle and then drinks deep. I apologize, my lord. It is not that I am a cowardly man, merely. I was not Neathborn. When I ventured here, I knew nothing of claymen. I'd hardly imagined I might one day share a handsome cab with a charismatic devil. I had never even heard the tale of the sorrow spiders whose webs catch men's minds as easily as their bodies. Have you visited the observatory where they nest? I suspect not. His hand trembles. It was a full year I found myself there with the lady. She wrapped me in silk, and her children kept me warm. She gave me her sight, and all she asked in return was my eye. It was a dream I cannot call a nightmare, and yet one I awoke from with the shivers of a revelation. It is in the light that such sorrow breeds, only in darkness could there be hope. The liberation of the night, I believed I saw it. For us all, I was misguided. But that story you know, please. I, I would return to my duties. All right. Kind of off on a tangent right there, but that's cool. If there's a giant spider on board carrying an eyeball off, I expect you to report it. All right, so we've got more guts here. We can assist the fading Haru specs. So we hold off the enemy pirates one more time. We gain five intriguing snippets. We have succeeded in a challenge. The flesh reveals all. Get our port report. And then we'll cut some flesh for the Chelinit so that we can get paid. And then with the Haru specs, have we completed enough here? We can ask about her. We can ask about the Traveler, a witness to nothing. Oh, yeah, that's right. We need to ask about this. This must be the person the sixth witness meant for you to meet. The fading Haru specs shakes her head. I have seen nothing of this, but nor have I asked. If I have it in me, once I have my answer, I will attempt the divination. We'll have the opportunity to find the six witness answer later on. Okay. Our apprenticeship is already at five. It doesn't look like we've hunted enough. So I don't know how many more things we have to slay in order to make this work. But, oh, good. Fuel is cheap here. Good. That sounds great. I can sell my live specimens. I've got Tales of Terror, but I don't know how many Tales of Terror I actually have. Thirteen of them. I could trade them in for Stygian Ivory. What was it that this dude wanted? Let's see. The Venture Capitalist. Dream and a Scheme. See, I do wish you could actually unfold these and recall what you needed for some of the stuff. Like, I've always been a little bit disappointed by the journal in this game. It gives you such bare minimum information a lot of the time. Yeah, I was going to say, you know that's an evil creature down there, right? There's no way it's not. It's always an evil creature. Go ahead, fart bubbles so that we can go up to the surface. Fart forth all of your bubbles. It's our only hope. And we find ourselves near Rosegate, actually. Let's go back to Rosegate. I don't think we've picked up... I suppose I should drop off the nastiness that we picked up here, too. There's no reason not to do it. I think they pay us, too. We get, like, 50 echoes or, like, 100 echoes or something for it. Either way, it's money to pay for the resupply that we just undertook. So with the Chelliner, we will supply the Redolent Flesh Merchant. Oh, 200 echoes. Not bad. 
Not bad at all. Definitely worth the endeavor. Go ahead and kill the lamp, and we are going to make our way towards Rosegate. We'll hit Isle of Cats. We'll hit Visage, maybe, then Nook. I don't know. We'll see what we'll see what happens as we get out in that direction. Still got quite a journey in front of us. What a week, eh? What a week. It's been kind of a crazy week for everybody, I think. Kind of a crazy, nasty, vitriolic week. Just for all parties involved. I don't think I've opened my Facebook now in like five days because every time I do, you're just assailed by nastiness. It's just like friends and neighbors turning on each other right now. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad out there right now. Go ahead and if I can go down to Rosegate, that'd be great. I think I'm actually over the top of it right now. And so once we're right here, we should be able to flip around real, real quick. I don't know. My, my initial response to stuff like this, the negativity and whatnot, is just to stay away from it. Just be like, nah, I don't want to be a part of this. Every now and again, for catharsis, I'll indulge. But most of the time, I'm just like, eh. I don't need this kind of drama in my life. I prefer to take a wait and see, I guess, tone to everything. There's a time and a place for losing your shit. Let's see. Do we have something awaits us? Oh, we do. We can deliver supplies to Rosegate. I don't really have that many, though, so I probably would not recommend it. Let's sell heart metal ingots here. I think we're definitely going to have to go to the Isle of Cats to resupply. We could take an hour's rest. My guess is that probably lowers our horror. Get our port report, and with the creation of a cigar, we needed ambiguous eoliths and romantic literature. Well, romantic literature, I think, comes from the Isle of Cats, and it's fairly close. So that shouldn't be super hard to get our hands on. What's over here? Oh, a critter. Another critter. I'm just going to suggest that we surface for right now. We've already got our port report. Once we've resupplied and we've got ourselves all set up for the journey back home, I will be a bit more daring about the way I handle my business. But for now, let's do the Isle of Cats first. Is it Port Carnelian where you get romantic literature or the Isle of Cats? You get romantic literature somewhere, and then when you go into port at London, they stamp it. And then you can sell it for, like, one Echo's Profit, or you can smuggle it in, and you can sell it unstamped for like 10 or something like that. There, There's a lot of little items and things to keep track of in this game. They're all over the place. So we've got provisioners here. Good lord, that's expensive. Fortunately, we don't have much of an option right now. Isri's Office. We can accept new commissions. You're hardly squeamish about smuggling red honey. If you change your mind, you could always return the shipment over to the Admiralty instead. Yeah, go ahead. The scholar will give you some notes in return. Bring them to me, and I shall be most pleased. Isri slides the casket over to you. Very pointedly does not enumerate the consequences of returning without the notes. Instead, they smile too wide, and you shiver. So we've got a cargo of red honey on board right now, which I think will be good. We'll ignore our restless nights. Port Cavendish. We'll take our port report. And... We can't sell sunlight here. Maybe you don't get... Maybe it is in Port Carnelian that you get it. Let's sail up to Visage then. And we'll more than likely handle their storyline in the next episode. Because theirs is going to take up like a big ass chunk of an episode. Like it's probably going to take a good 20 minutes just to resolve Visage. But there is a pretty good thing that you get at the end of Visage if you do it right. And so my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcast for the next episode of Sunless Sea. In the next episode, we'll go to Visage. We'll get our port reports. We'll do the storyline there, and we'll see how it all resolves itself. All right. If you've had the opportunity, check out the Patreon. I've got a link for you down below. If you want to get the game, you should also check that out in the description. I will see you all next time. Stop in tomorrow for the continued adventures of our captain. Hi, do everybody.